Hello and Assalamualaikum to all the viewers. Welcome again to my video session. I hope through a series of video session that you have a go no gain knowledge related to maritime transportation and its economics. My name is Mama Azamdin and in this video session I'm going to discuss on the topic of the supply of maritime transport. This video session is a continuation of the of my last video which is the demand of maritime transport. Before we start, let's refresh back our basic economics. What is a supply? A big question mark here. What is a supply? According to Case and Fair in year 1999, supply is the amount of a particular product that a firm is willing to offer for sale at a particular price during a given period of time. The law of supply always shown the positive relationship between price and quantity of goods supplied. So, increase in price will increase in the quantity of goods supplied. According to Martin Stoppard in year 2009, he said, the world merchant fleet provide fi fixed amount of transport capacity. This merchant fleet could be increased by building up a new vessel or it could be disposed or decreased by disposing this vessel, old vessel, as a scrap metal. For step for st Stoppard in his book in year 2009 he advises he suggested that the supply of ocean vessel is affected by these five factors these five factors consist number one the world fleet number two the fleet activity the fleet productivity Number three, the shipbuilding production. Number four, the freight revenue. And lastly, number five is the scrapping and losses that occur. The caveat in supply of ocean services are considered slow and ponderous in response to changes in demand. To build a new merchant ocean, ocean vessel, it would take two to three years, depending the condition of the shipyard. If the shipyard are busy, if they have a lot of project, it may consider to four years. Due to the slow response, slow response of supply, as uh, the, there are limited numbers of ocean vessel, the ship owner only will make a response to meet the demand of ocean vessel requirement. But they cannot be done promptly; it only will take certain times. In other words, she owner will only respond in a slow manner. Before we discuss further into the factors that affect supply, let us understand the framework of supply in maritime transport. In the context of maritime transport, the supply of ocean vessel is controlled by four group of decision makers. 
these four group of decision makers that control the supply of ocean vessel consists is consists of number one ship owner number two charters or the cargo owner or shipper number three the bank who provide loans to ship owner to build up new vessel and number four are the regulatory authorities who make rules and regulation regarding the operation and safety of ocean vessel at the ocean now let us look in detail the first factor which affect the supply of ocean vessel the first factor that affect the supply of ocean vessel is referring to the global merchant fleet as we can see over the years the size or the capacity of merchant merchant fleets has increased for example in the year 1960s the capacity to load cargo for a merchant fleet is only about 82 million deadweight tonnage whereas in the year 2000 the ocean fleets has a capacity to load cargoes approximately at average of 740 million deadweight tonnage this has shown an increase and increase of the capacity to load cargoes what happened here is that the size of ocean vessel has getting bigger and bigger to do this condition as the vessel has size has increased there is more cargo able to be load into the vessel this has applied to ocean tankers as well as bulk cargo vessel another situation is that the lifespan of ocean vessel is about on average of 25 years ship owner only scrap their vessel after 25 years so this shows that the supply of ocean vessel is quite slow as the productivity the lifespan of an ocean vessel is on average is 25 years is quite long another situation is that in the shipping market ship owner prefer their vessel to be flexible the ship must be flexible in order to carry any kinds of cargoes that is available as the ship as the shipping market is volatile flexibility enable ships the ocean vessel to transfer from supporting one operation to support to another this occur when one operation one market for example the bulk cargo market to to load wheat and the demand for wheat is already no more the vessel need to be used for the purpose of uh, transporting containerized cargo <clears throat> when this occurred ship owner will have a favorable income in their vessel operation and this will make make them survive in the long run another situation is that uh, when the ship owner begins to increase their vessel size capacity when there is a lot of uh, big size ultra size vessel in the market the cargo owners would like to reduce the freight rates this is common the cargo owners will look for opportunity to reduce the freight rate from the ship owner and ship owner this big size ship owner agreed to reduce the freight rate and what happened is that 
the ship broker now having a situation whereby the cargos the ship uh, the cargo owners will go for a bigger vessel this has impacted the medium sized ocean vessel the ship owner for a medium sized ocean vessel started to feel the pinch as their vessel is not being employed this will create situation whereby the medium sized ship uh, ship owner start to get out from the market or they have to become more flexible to reduce their price to cope with the market now let us look at the second factor that affect the supply of ocean transport the second factor that affect supply of ocean transport is referred to the fleet productivity the issue raised here is that size of ocean vessel has increased but the capacity to maximize its cargo loading has not achieved maximum capacity many of these large size ocean vessel has not achieved full capacity in terms of loading of their cargoes and operational capacities thus this ocean vessel cargo just carrying small portion small portion of cargoes in their operational activity another issue raised is that carrying cargoes by an ocean vessel is only a small portion it's just a small portion of a vessel productivity stop it again in his book in uh, year 2009 maritime economic third edition stated that ocean vessel only carry cargoes for 137 days in a year only 137 days in a year ocean vessel carry cargoes this is just 37 percent of the year in whole year just 37 percent is allocated for operational activities now if a vessel only spend 137 days sailing with cargoes what happened to the rest through 128 days stopper again in his book said that 40 days 40 days of ocean vessel productivity is spent on loading and discharging of cargoes uh, this just accumulated about 10% in a year for operational activities so previously 37 now 10% just 47% of the year is allocated for loading and sailing about 111 days of the vessel used for ballast time the ballast of water to its activity to stabilize the ocean vessel consume 30% of vessel operation activities whereas the final 84 days of a year or 23% of a year involved in non-operational or non-trading activities but this is crucial for ocean vessel these activities consist of vessel repairs and maintenance without repair and maintenance we could not have a seaworthy vessel to transport our cargoes the productivity of ocean vessels the fleet of ocean vessel depend on four main factors which is consisting number one the speed Number two, the port time. Number three, date with utilization. And number four, it loaded days at sea. Speed of a vessel determine the time the vessel take
for a voyage. When an ocean vessel sailed at a reduced speed, this resulted to a low transport capacity. Also, when the hull falling, which, which means there are barnacles attached to the ocean hulls, it also reduces the vessel speed. So, slow vessel is not a productive vessel. Second, the port time or port stay for ocean vessel also provide input capacity of vessel activity. A lower port stay for a vessel is much favorable because the vessel could uh, sail much faster. This can be seen in a liner service, especially container vessels, whereby they only have 24 hours port stay. However, bulk cargo vessel would consume between 3 to 5 days for uh, loading. So, bulk cargo vessel would consume a longer days compared to a containerized vessel at port. For port operators, they would give priority to the vessel that have a low port stay days. This to the reason is that they want to utilize their berth for other vessel to come in to do the loading and discharging activities. So if a vessel with a low port stays, for example, less than 24 hours or 24 hours, a port will give priority to this vessel to berth at their port. Also, not 100% of the vessel that we tarnish is allocated for storage. What it means is that not 100% of, of vessel capacity is used for loading to load cargo to hold the cargo in the vessel. The dead weight tonnage utilization refer to the cargo carriage capacity that is lost owing to bunkers and storage. So apart from cargos, the vessel also need to have its bunkers, the few, for it to sail. According to Stamper, Stompert, the rule of thumb suggested that bulk ocean carriers should utilize 95% and ocean tanker should utilize its 96% of its dead weight tonnage for loading cargo load capacity. In the context of loaded day at seas, ocean vessels need to juggle between sailing and also these unproductive days in the middle of the ocean, such as ballast or of higher. Such reduction in productive days increases the capacity of the ocean vessel to sail. When it vessel sails, it create revenue. So ship owner one their vessel to sail. During hard times, especially a economic recession, ship owner made it found it is hard to utilize its vessel for transport purpose. Therefore, some ship owner use the flexibility of their vessel to be as a storage facility in the middle of the ocean. Uh, T is to store goods such as wheat or grains, the agriculture materials, uh, rather on the board of their vessels, rather than to store them on the silos at shores. Such activities will give them revenue, rather than the vessel is not having, uh, is not have conducting any income. Well, I have covered two factors that affect the supply of ocean transport. The first factor is world fleet and the second factor is fleet producti productivity.
I will continue my discussion on the third, fourth, and fifth factors on my next video presentation. Please watch my second video on the factors that affect supply of ocean transport. Thank you. Goodbye. My name is Mama Azam Din. Hope to see you again and good speed.